Hi everybody, I'm Caitlin Shanks and I am here with the lovely Anna Hockett and we're so excited to bring you another episode of Two Blondes and a Printer, a Rackaby sponsored podcast where we talk everything from customer communications, tech, data, mail, print, and of course, the sexy side of print, our favorite thing. So Anna, who are we talking to today? Hi guys, thanks so much, Caitlin. Today, I'm so excited. We are joined by Alyssa Summers, a fellow Girls Who Print member, friend, and CEO of Printbase. The mission of Printbase is to give printers an affordable digital marketing service, as well as the knowledge and tools to grow their businesses online by taking control of generating more leads and more sales on their terms. Sorry, I had to read that, you guys. Alyssa <laughs> started this company with her business partner because they saw a need in the industry and really wanted to help. So we are so excited to hear more about her view, about her experience and what she's learned in the print industry. So please help, help me welcome again, a fellow Girls Who Print member, Alyssa, hello. Hi, thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. We are so excited to have you. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, absolutely. Caitlin, are you, I, I, it looks like you're unfrozen, so we're good to go here. Um, Alyssa, so first, first question first, I know you and I connected a little ways back. Um, what did you think when we asked you to be on our podcast? Uh, I was pumped because it is a female run podcast about print. I didn't know that existed. When I saw that on the Girls Who Print LinkedIn page, I was like, is that real? I feel like I'm on an island over here, you know, in the industry, being a young woman. And um, I just, I was so excited because I just love connecting with women in this space because there's not as many of us. And so the more conversations we can be having, the better. Absolutely. Well, we are just so appreciative of you for joining us and we can't wait to hear a little bit more about what you do. You know, just for our listeners, this is going to be a little bit different if you listen to the first couple because Alyssa, as well as, as Caitlin and myself, are um, we're servicing a lot of the print providers where so far we've had a couple folks that have been on the actual print or customer communication side. So um, this is gonna be really exciting for us to hear what you're seeing in the industry, Alyssa. And I think it's gonna be really helpful for a lot of the folks listening to hear what the trends are, what you're what you're hearing in the industry and see how, how we might be able to help them. So thanks again so much for joining. So let's kind of let's kind of dig into it here. So tell us a little bit more about what you're doing, Alyssa, and um and then we can kind of, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of get into some, some conversation here. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I've been in the print industry for what, eight, nine years now. Um, and again, it's all from the marketing side. So kind of my story is we, uh, my business partner and I were working uh, as a marketing agency, uh, working with B2B businesses, doing their digital marketing. So SEO, social media, email marketing, running social ads, Google ads. Uh, all the everything when you think of digital marketing uh, or marketing online in general, that's what we were doing. And we were working in a lot of different industries, but we really found this need in the commercial printing space um, and for print service providers as well for marketing because a lot of them weren't doing it. And so we really started working with a lot of um, print companies as an agency. And Obviously, we're learning uh, the industry, what works, what doesn't, what messages are landing and resonating with people, um, how to get in front of these uh, customers that these companies want to work with. Um, but being an agency, it's not necessarily the most affordable marketing option. And a lot of uh, print companies don't have big marketing budgets um, or non-existent marketing budget. So then um, that's kind of where we like birthed this idea of print base to or make marketing teams for that matter. Right. Exactly. Like yeah. Cause the alternative to hiring, um, an agency is doing it yourself. And, um, a lot of what we see is there's no one with a marketing job title. Um, <laughs> so you have someone like a graphic designer or uh, a sales team that is said, Hey, we're going to add this to your job description, which is marketing and do digital marketing on top of everything else you're doing. And that's, uh, uh, sometimes it works. It's just not realistic for every company. Um, so taking all of that knowledge and those findings, we're like, we need to we need to create an affordable solution for these print companies. And so that's kind of how we came up with Printbase. As it's um, 
way, way, way more affordable than hiring an agency to do it. Um, and so we created, I guess this is my shameless plug. Uh, we created uh, all this content. So we have all the content that you could just literally copy and paste and put into your email platform or put on your social channels. And we also have the courses teaching you how to do it. And we're like, this is how you do it. You can do it yourself and it's really affordable. Um, but then there's still the element of time and labor put into that. So we also um, came up with a service to do it for them. And again, it's really, really affordable and it's making them visible. So that's kind of the story of how like print base came to be. Um, and I kind of just fell in love with um, the, the opportunity inside of the industry because there was such a need for it. No, that's, that's awesome. amazing. And I think for our audience, give us just a range. So we say it's much more affordable, but what does that mean? Give me the nuts and bolts, the dollars and cents, ballpark agency cost versus where you guys are falling. Right. Yeah. Because like these days, everything's expensive. So right. I I'm sorry, sorry. what is oh, relatively relative. expensive? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And so for in the agency, the marketing agency world, there's obviously a vast uh you can you can go from anywhere to a thousand dollars a month to uh, 30,000, depending on what you're doing. But um, a lot of kind of like the normal average range, especially in like the, if we're, let's talk B2B, the B2B space is like four to five grand a month. Um, and that's sometimes that's just the service cost. So that's labor, having people do the marketing for you. And then you have additional ad spend on top of that. So um, that's a pretty good chunk of change for these, especially for these smaller print companies, these um, print shops yeah. uh and that's just not realistic um and where we are like let's get it under let's get it at under a 400 dollars a month which is much more feasible so um big big difference they are making it <laughs> achievable raise, for these yes. companies <laughs> to do it yeah mm -hmm. Because even if you think about hiring someone straight out of college who is very green to the industry just to have someone internal do your marketing one, they're never going to know the industry. That's going to take a couple of years. Yes. Yikes. Um, and so even if you're getting the cheapest, cheapest labor out there to do it internally, it's still yes. not going to come close. <laughs> oh, yes. um, so yeah, no, thank you for that. Um, so I'm curious, what drew you to the print industry in the first place? Because everyone who has come into this space that we've talked to so far, okay, it's either, you know, they've had their entire family since their great, great granddaddy who owned a printer and that's how they got into it. Or they sort of stumbled into this industry and haven't been able to leave because they love it so much. So kind of tell us what, what drew you in. Yeah, not a family business, I'll say that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, again, it was the eight working in the agency and um, my business partner now, uh, he was like, I, I know that there's this industry. And I'm like, what's commercial print? I don't know what it is. You know, like, like, you know, things are printed. You get things in your hand. You like, you know what it is. Like, I don't know. I was right out of college and I don't know. I know. No, what, it's like, a whole new world. Once you start to really look are. around and think, wow, wait, hold on. That yes. had to be printed and that label had to come from a factory and get printed yeah. somewhere. And oh, all those medical documents I receive in the mail. Like you really start to put it together. Just how yeah. many parts of our lives commercial print. You see the world differently much. once you work in the space. You're like, I'm just walking to dinner and you're like, banner, sign, menu. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> how many, Caitlin, how many times have you and me been like, Oh my God, they, they print how many menus a day? We should go talk to them. Or right. Alyssa, like Alyssa, like we're, we're in the same boat. Like you don't, you don't think about it until you're in. And that's one of the reasons we started this in the first place is because this is this billion dollar industry. Everyone keeps saying print is dead. Like, well, is it because everybody's <laughs> still printing stuff? Yeah. Right. And there's a lot of things that will never not be printed. Like, they're gonna have to exist. Well, um, then all these print shops too are learning, they're trying to make more revenue, which we'll talk about a little bit later, but like, so they're all investing in these wide format printers and printers that can do promotional materials and printers that can do all this other stuff and 3D printing. Swiss roll feed. I mean, there's all these investments in the hardware side of it. And then the other thing is like, we talked about the other day, Caitlin, is like books, people are still gonna print books. Even if people all have Kindles, yeah. they're still gonna be printing books. They're still gonna be, so it's just- uh, I'm shamelessly we're, we're, here with my notebook on paper. I mean. <laughs> we're, we're a tech company, but Caitlin and I are still like, 
couple old ladies. It just, it just hits you got to contribute to the business we're in. No. Yes. Yes. Uh, it's, so, it's so good to know that other people also are like, oh, now, but like, because once you know, then you're like, yes. everything is print, like, here we are. And so that's, that's so cool. I, I have to hand it to you and your business partner for seeing the opportunity and then mm -hmm. having the guts to be like, it's not just like a hobby. We're going to like, we're going to do this. And that's where, yeah. that's something that really inspires me about you, Alyssa. And that's where I was so excited to have you today too. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I think the opportunity and like, I mean, at the, at the core marketing, isn't, um, directly changing lives every single day, you know, like I'm not going in performing surgery, you know, there's and educating children. I think they are all amazing people. That's not what I'm doing, but it's still, you're, you're helping this, this industry, these people, these family owned companies continue to thrive. Um, and so we found that opportunity and it's, and it's exciting because we had to do so much research to understand every aspect of the industry as if we're in it every single day and we're not, you know, so like that challenge was also fun. Um, and then now getting to be able to apply that to these companies and share that knowledge and be like, we know this works just do it start use it you know and like so that's fun like selfishly the challenge and just being to be like look what we know and sharing that with someone is just it's so fun it's rewarding you know like that's 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 my education that's that's my, yeah. that's my surgery you know it's <laughs> <laughs> no it's still it's still vital and i think I'd be curious to pivot and maybe talk about a couple of examples or, you know, use cases that you've walked through with clients and maybe one that's been a success story and hey, even one that's been really challenging and maybe, maybe blew up. Give, give us the yeah. details. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting because you have like the, the two different worlds of like the agency side where, um, because there's a, a higher price point, um, service cost, there's, there's more, um, feedback get being given by these companies. And, um, a lot of times that gets in the way. And I know we had talked about previously, like some challenges when it comes to marketing and, um, advice that like we may have, I could give is like, um, not letting like personal bias and the, having this perfect brand get in the way. Um, so I would say like something that hasn't worked in the past is, um, print is a creative industry. It's, it's, it's creative and it's not, uh, at the same time, I feel like that's like this weird, um, split between it's like this overly creative industry, but it's also like, it's like manufacturing, you know, mm -hmm. so it's a lot of Yes. Yes. And so the creative part of it, um, usually those are the people driving the marketing that you're working with. They're the ones that are like, it has to be perfect. The colors and all, because that's what they do every day. But what we try and do, we're like, yes, that's wonderful and great. But if you're not visible online at all, if, if you're letting all of that stop this social post from going out from this new website, from going live, from this one word, that's going to get you found in search engines. And if you don't let that go on, go live, it doesn't matter because no one's going to know about it. Uh, so that, I feel like that's kind of like, I'm mixing questions here, but no, that's like, an good. Uh, that gets in the way. Um, sure. it's like yeah, we've like analysis paralysis, uh, yes. you know, uh, or just, you know, overthinking and wanting yes. to be perfect as a perfectionist who's had to really work on it themselves. <laughs> um, I know how almost debilitating it can be when you're so hyper-focused on getting yes. it right that then, you know, you don't even try. And it's all about just making that first step. It sounds like. Yes, absolutely. So on that note, really two quick questions is one, yeah. can you just let everybody in the audience know, um, like what, and, and I think I know like this, but the, like what the difference is between an agency and then using a company like your guys is, or just going straight to you, Alyssa, what would be, what, what's the big difference other than the cost, obviously, like we talked about. Yeah. Yeah. So the typical, um, marketing agency model is you go through like a sales process and you're like, okay, let's do it. And you're signing, you're signing this contract for, um, a lot of times like a, like a retainer, like a monthly fee. Um, and you are like assigned a project manager an account manager, and, um, you're working closely with that person. They're sharing content with you, getting your feedback on, uh, social posts or blogs, emails, you're building it, you're, you're going back and forth. Um, 
and then behind the scenes you have a team of like strategists and ma- all you know all those people um but where what we do is you you just become a cu- and we just run with it we just have it we have such a scale scalable streamlined process where someone comes on we get connected to other accounts their social accounts their analytics get website access for all the tracking and we're able to get it all set up turn it on and go so there's not this monthly uh communication that's like required um and that's kind of it's kind of um implied with the agencies because it is more creative and there's more custom work where we have it built out where like we know this works saying these things and we're going to push them to your website and so the beautiful part for these companies is they don't have to think about it. It just is running. They're getting leads. They're they're reaching out to those leads, making sales, and they don't have to feel this like burden of I need to look at these social posts and give my feedback, you know. So um, the time aspect plays a big part um, in the two differences between between like an agencies and kind of what we're doing. Okay, so time, money, which is pivotal to everybody. Yes. So then the next step would then be as far as like challenges, because I've been on both sides. I've worked for a service, a print service provider, as well as, you know, a company that's servicing the print service providers. So how do you, you know, in, in this, this question, Caitlin, you know, we talk about this all the time is I think when people get overwhelmed to like, just like what Caitlin was saying, analysis or paralysis by analysis, they get overwhelmed by certain things, software, marketing, SEO, social, um, social selling, what would you say are some like good first steps or, you know, maybe, maybe like a way to shift some thinking as it, as it pertains to what, what we're talking about today? Yeah. Um, I think, and this kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier. Um, I think a lot of times when it, uh, uh, anyone in the print industry decides we're going to start marketing online. <laughs> They're like, we're going to do it in whatever way, hiring an agency, doing it in-house, taking advantage of um, a service like we offer or a solution that we offer. Um, you're like, I have to have this brand. If I Google marketing online, all you see is brand, logo, messaging, like all of these things. Overwhelming. Yes. And and it, I, I don't want to diminish the importance of it because it is important but it's it should not prevent you from starting and that's what we see a lot of and so um a challenge is just to um release that especially when you're a creative perfectionist person that's why you're in the industry and you're really good at your job um is to release that and say okay i i just need to start and all of that can be built and created along the way refined whatever that may be so um where i always say a really good starting point especially for print is social everyone's on social media and um i a high percentage of companies usually have at least one social profile may that be facebook linkedin instagram twitter they might not use it but they have it exists <laughs> yeah. so the whole like do you have access to it is a whole nother thing <laughs> but um just starting posting and um a lot of times whoever's in charge of marketing is sitting at a desk with printed pieces next to them. So we always say, take a picture of it. It's right next to you. And all you do is you you upload that to this profile and say, look what we did for our customers. It, they were able to fundraise for their nonprofit. They were able to get new sales within 30 days of opening their restaurant. You know, like whatever that mm-hmm. is, just post it and say, work with us, send them to your website, you know? and. there's always going to be that like barrier to entry, just like just doing it. But social is free. And for the most part, it's pretty easy to get started just on one channel. It's just like, don't overthink it. Take, look at what's on your desk, take a picture of it on your phone and post it. So that's kind of always like where I start as I was like, because a lot of other things get really complicated with technology or there's like money attached to platforms and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And ad so, so we yes. talked about this a little bit before we got this all going. It's like, I like to use the gym analogy. Remember how we talked about this also? Like, yes, the, they say, and I don't know if you guys do Peloton. I don't know. I don't know what the heck everybody's using, but like, they always say the hardest part of the workout is literally getting to the gym and like starting the workout. So I like, I have to just say that out loud because I feel like that's 
Such a great way for anybody to get started with any type of, of social selling, I'll call it, is because like we know, I bet like most of your clients, you could go and find some sort of profile for them that existed years ago or some sort of Twitter X, whatever you want to call it, or some sort of Instagram profile. But the, the amount of using, like actual using it is, is very limited where it's just about getting to the gym, like just get there and just post it. Don't worry about if it's going to bomb or if it's going to get a million likes because no one really cares, but it's still going to gain you organic search results by posting in the first place, right? Yeah. Mm hundred -hmm. percent. Yeah. And that's only going to grow. And I don't know, to be cheesy, like you'll get more confident doing it. You know, you're going to be like, and you're going to be looking, looking around your shop, like looking for things to post and you'll get ideas and you don't have to be a marketer. You don't have to be this overly creative thinker. It's just, you're in it every single day. And that's, what's hard. Um, whether your agency or like on the print service, um, or the print based side, like the solution side of it, we're not there. We're not in the shop. So right. it's like, I, we all, I always want to like empower people that are there in the shop every day to be like, get like, hands on. They're like, you could take such cool videos. Like I get, I geek out when we go to conferences and they have all like the printers running and like, they're just, I'm like, I could watch this all day. And I know it's nothing when you do it all day and you see it, but that's just, that's perfect content to put mm -hmm. out because other people are going to be like, wow, that's cool. Or it might just get in front of the person that is like needing that, but not look, not knowing where to find that print partner. For sure. Well, even in the transactional space, I feel like, cause that's a lot of who we work with too. It's like the, you know, statements and billers and, um, EOB like insurance companies, but they have so much great stuff at their fingertips, like yeah. stacks of bills. And, you know, people are using all these different marketing tricks and tip like for, for different types of bills to try to, you know, multi-message with people. And then the other thing I was going to say, Caitlin, like you, you geek out on the, on the, on the different types of production too. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Listen, we're at a conference and Caitlin is no joke. Like talking to this guy in a booth about a laminator, like this physical laminator. And she's like, I'm like, what is she doing? <laughs> you were like, all right, do you think we could partner with them? And I was like, oh no, no. I was asking for my own personal edification. <laughs> I was excited. My little Hobby Lobby personal laminator does not even come close to what I'm seeing here. So, but it's so That's true, amazing. you know, just you never know what other people are gonna be interested in or fascinated by. And so it might be day to day to you, but post it out there because it might just drive traffic or at the very least, get you, you know, a better search ranking on Google, right? Or just Absolutely. a little bit more visibility. Yeah. Um, you just need to be present. I feel like the, the core message, because there's, there's so much out there and there's so much you can do. And I mean, that's why I love it. That's why what I geek out about is all these different things you can do to be found online and to, to be, to get more visibility, to do all these things. But at the core, you just need to be there. And a lot of these companies aren't. And the more companies that are present, yeah, there's going to be a, it's going to be a little bit more competitive, but it's just not, it, it's not going to compare to a lot of other industries. So just be there, post on your social, just, just be, be there. I love and, it. And um, you can only go up from there. So here's a question for you. So I know you said just choose a social platform, just post, like just get started. But is there a platform that one you would recommend if you were starting out on social, which one would you choose? And then uh, how frequently do you recommend people post? Um, how many times are we going to the gym every week to really start <laughs> getting momentum online? Love I love that full circle moment. <laughs> um, I, I feel like that's kind of a hard question. Um, what is really successful with B2B businesses is LinkedIn, um, which makes sense, you know? these companies are online. Um, so if you're, if you're a commercial printer looking for that type of business, I would say LinkedIn and to not get too technical and nerdy, the, um, the access, how you can like create a page and invite people to access it on your team, like in your company, it's way simpler. Facebook and Instagram have made it so complicated and they have all these security things in place. I, I'm currently experiencing that. So that's why I have a little bit of feelings about it. But um, <laughs> LinkedIn is a really good place to be for that, um, especially if you, perfect world, you can transition into like the ad space on LinkedIn. That's the best place for these industries to run ads because you're, you can get right in front of these people. Um, but organically, LinkedIn's a really good place. And a couple times a week, maybe. Um, okay. 
is, is good. You know, once a week, twice, three times a week. I mean, it doesn't have to be every day by any means. I don't think anyone, anyone has time for that. <laughs> that that's a lot. But yeah, just a couple times a week would be um, perfect because then the, the consistency of that, again, it's kind of flexing that muscle internally and you're going to be looking for more content. Um, mm -hmm. And then search engines are going to be like, hey, you're a company. And they're going to start showing <laughs> your content and um, you'll start showing yeah no that's such a good point it's really not the biggest barrier of entry right and once you start doing it it only gets stronger and so i know you work with a lot of more small and medium-sized businesses right that's the niche where they don't necessarily have the biggest budget and you're a good fit so yeah. i would assume that they're probably the ones who are also giving you the most pushback on wait well hold on i've been doing this for so long I don't, you know, have a social presence and it's been fine till now. Why would I want to make a change and bring something else into yeah. my orbit? Um, what do you say to them? You know, what, why is it important now? It's almost like you were on these, the sales calls I was on recently. <laughs> <laughs> That's almost like verbatim what they say. Um, but it makes sense. It does. It makes perfect sense. And so really what, what I always say is like, I get it, but the world the world is changing, and the way people are looking for print partners, print products, services is they're going online. I think you have the word of mouth, the referral, those um, really long lasting relationships are crucial to sustain those. Um, but that's not going to be forever. You know, businesses ebb and flow. New management comes in, and they might start looking to change who their vendors are, who their print partners are. And so how do you, how do you continue to bring in new business? It's, it's your, you're meeting buyers where they're at, which is online. Mm -hmm. Good or bad. We all first, we go to Google to solve our problems. Right. And so, um, that's, that's what not we do. There, just, it's not going to happen for you. <laughs> right. Just don't go to WebMD. You're fine until you go to WebMD. And then, and then, and then, then you just, you, downhill. <laughs> and then you have like 17, illnesses, different like, illnesses. But then no one's, no one's showing up for work the next day. What, <laughs> do you have any, do you have any like, um, stories or like about maybe taking someone who did give you some pushback and then, you know, how you might be, have been able to transform their business or help them, you know, like do what you, what you, what you love to do. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, there's always, I feel like there's always a good healthy mix of pushback, whether that's, um, like pre-sale or post-sale. Um, and I'll, I guess I'll kind of speak like a combo of like agency and like the, the service-based, um, like print-based side of things is there's, there's just, there's, there's just such a reluctant reluctance and a hesitancy because I just feel like I need to be online, but like, why does it matter? And so, um, once we can like kind of break down those walls and start putting content out, it's the, the, the turnaround is actually really quick because you're going to start seeing more traffic to like your websites. And then you're able to capture some of that traffic and turn those into leads. And then what do leads, those can become sales. And so it's, it's usually a pretty quick process where like they start to see results from it. But the hardest part is getting over that hump and saying, this is, this is the content that works. Cause you know, everyone's going to have their own view of, um, what content they should be putting out. Should I just be talking about, um, printed work that we've done? Should we just be saying success stories? Should we talk about the print process and get really nerdy about it? You know, um, and so kind of taking all of that into consideration and crafting content that we know will work and resonate with the people they're trying to work with. And then they're going to see performance. They're going to see results from it um, pretty quickly. And so that's always fun because, <laughs> I mean, it's it's not always easy to get past that. And then when you do, you're like, yeah. And then everyone's just excited to see leads coming in and then um, getting new business and talking to these. Like a lot of companies we work with are um, wanting to get into higher education space. That's a good market. And so when you see leads come through like these well-known colleges, you're like, yeah. You know, and everyone's doing a little dance party virtually because it's it's working and um, that just fuels it, you know. Have you grown your business, Alyssa, through word of mouth or how have you grown your business? All online. Well, it going to like conferences and stuff, like sure. trade shows, all of that helps. But um, it's been online through yeah. um, email marketing because we've um, had good relationships with a lot of printers, whether um, we've worked with those companies in the past, but agency weren't a good fit. 
um, or just other print companies. So communicating on email, getting on calls with them and just saying, here's all of the pain points of marketing in your industry. And here's how we fight that. Here's that gap that we fill, that void we fill for you. Um, running ads, being present on social, um, all of those things is really how we've done it. And that, and that's kind of the, the best part because it's, it's proof of the product, you know, like we're say. able to say we created this business. We were, <laughs> we were non-existent and here's all the, the pathways we took to marketing. Now you can do it too. And we can do it for you. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Um, so uh, when you're looking at, you know, the printing industry specifically, where do you sort of see the future of it going with respect to you know, digital advertising and marketing? Um, look in your crystal ball for me. What do you see? <laughs> I, I love this question because I feel like it's it's a commonly talked about but also not talked about thing like the because everyone says it's dead and it's like well what's the future i always say <laughs> cliche or not i feel like the future is the same but way better you know so like the print side of it there's new technologies and there's gonna be so i feel like there's so many experiences that can be created with print but then when you tie that with digital like you have augmented reality and you have like even like as simple as like these variable data pearl experiences like i work in digital marketing and i have for a long time and i know print but when i get that stuff in the mail i'm like this was made for me and it just <laughs> lands different you know and that's like been around like that's not new and right. me, we've, had, we, we've had direct mail or you know as my parents said junk mail since yes time <laughs> yeah but when it when it has my name at every point in the process or like something mm -hmm. about where i live or what i like i'm like sold and i do this i know this you know and so i feel like there's so much potential there um the the more technology that comes to the print industry with like what they're able to do and i mean we got ai at our fingertips now you know and so i i just think it's gonna be just bigger and better um and i think the future of these companies through like i could apply the marketing part of it here too is there's just more opportunities to grow and to to reach new customers, get new business that you might not be able to by just being known locally, like down the street. You know, it can still be regional. You could still only work with regional businesses, but how would you normally reach them? I mean, door to door, but no, now you're able to do it online and you're able, there's just so many opportunities. Like I'm, I'm geeking. I'm, I'm like, <laughs> no, I'm geeking it. right now. Cause I just think there's so, there's so much. And I feel like it, like, I kind of feel like it's just getting started. The, the print industry with like the digital For online sure. marketing piece of it. That's just, I'm just excited to be a part of it. <laughs> well, I think you make a really interesting point. Like once you get into it and you uh, submerge yourself sort of in this environment of digital marketing and what that means personally for your business and reaching new customers, that's great. But then I also think it opens your mind to other ways you can be servicing your customers. Like if you as a business, as a print shop are showing up on the right platform, giving people the right content at the right time to find your business, you see how effective that is when you get that yeah. mailer in the mail that has your name that links back to the email you just got and the coupon code yeah. that was just texted to you. That consumer journey is so important. And if you can see that success for yourself as a print company, then I think you can reverse engineer it and be like, wait, my customers want that too. How can mm -hmm. I start as a print shop expanding my portfolio to you know, generate new revenue and give customers the services and the marketing offerings that you know they're also looking for and craving. So I think it's absolutely like a snowball effect. Once you're in it and you see the opportunity, it can even generate new business ideas, new revenue streams. It's exciting. Oh yes, for sure. And I bet your clients, Alyssa, are just like, I mean, I would just imagine they're so happy. Like they're so, because <laughs> it is, because it is scary for, especially, you know, we work with this, a lot of the same people. So we're working with some people that have been in this industry for a very long time. Like Caitlin said, a lot of businesses being handed down from the, the, you know, the parents to the kids and, and, and this really unique industry, but like a lot of people think they know what they're doing, which a lot of them are doing so much work, like so much work, but at the same time, it's, so then it's scary to invest in a new service or you know something that you know you have to do, but you don't really know if you should be doing it or not. And then all of a sudden right. you're like, 
well, there's people on our website that are like interested in working with us. Yeah. In our, that's like so exciting. And then you get to be a part of the success. Yeah. You yeah. feel it's like really we get cool. to be a part of these success now because we know you. So we're like, yes, let's win this thing together. Like this, yes. is, I, I think that it's gotta be so fun and I can understand why people like to work with you because you're so personable and you really, you're truly passionate. You care about what you do, which yeah. Like not everybody's like that. I mean, Caitlin and I know that about a lot of folks in in, in all different industries. So right. I can t I totally get it. I'm so like I said, I'm very proud to know you, and I am um, I'm just so proud of like that. What you guys, I I'm not a business owner. I don't start things. I work for someone, and I do what I'm told. <laughs> so like I think people that start businesses have so much guts to begin with, and I just think and I think that you're doing something that's so so important for this industry, and we can't wait to continue to work with you and, and even, you know, potentially work together on, on some things yeah. you know, moving forward too. So this has just been great. Um, yeah. Caitlin, do you want to ask the golden question or do, or do you want me to? Other right. than the cheers yeah. question, we're going to cheers at the end because that's what we always do. <laughs> but our favorite question that we always sign off with, Alyssa, what is the sexiest part of print? Ooh, uh, I, I thought long and hard about this and for me, I think the sexiest side, which kind of goes back, I feel like I have a theme for this, everything I've said, and this was not planned. Um, I think the sexy side is just all of the opportunities that are that exist, whether that be the creative or the technology or the experiences you can create. There's just not, I, I'm biased, but there's just not a lot of industries that just have this like vast like opportunity it's just it's just so i'm such i'm such a geek about it but no, that's what i love I that okay i love that so much because it's so true again multi-billion dollar industry that's being forced to change because it's traditionally commodity driven margins are getting thinner and thinner we're having to adapt and evolve to meet new needs yes. and stay alive and so with that with evolution and innovation comes opportunity. So it's it's yes. an exciting time. And I definitely think you're you're dead on. It's a sexy side of print. I it love is. it. <laughs> oh, listen, this has been so great. So if you have a beverage, we'll definitely keep, stay in touch. But if, yes. yeah, you have a beverage, we all do. So cheers to you. Thank you so much cheers. for joining us. us. Thank no, you so much for having me. This has been so much fun. We should do this more often. Well, I think we should probably do a follow-up. <laughs> Maybe a little live podcast at Printing United. That could yes. be fun. We'll, we'll be there, 100%. Let's Amazing. do it. All right. Book us I will also be there, and we'll have our microphone with us. Well, yes. We're we going to be so on the go. <laughs> Maybe at the beginning, because it's in Vegas, so if we're at the end, I will not have a voice even less than I already do. <laughs> Two, two blondes and a printer with a brunette meet <laughs> Vegas. Let's go. I'm here Take for it. it. I, love I love it. All right. And just to close things off, if you or someone you know out there would be a good fit for the pod, or maybe you just want to have a drink with us and talk everything print, uh, please reach out and contact us at two blondes and a printer at gmail.com. That's it, everybody. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.